Welcome back to Mac T Video. Welcome back, Mac T viewers and Mac T Ford Edge. And if you saw in the first video that I had, uh, we inspected the brakes on this blue 2011 Ford Edge, and we discovered that you can't judge a book by its cover, right? So we're going to go ahead and replace these rotors, and of course, I'm going to measure how much damage was done to them with a micrometer, and we're going to see how thick they are being there all gouged up. But Follow along, and we're going to go ahead and change some brakes. Okay, we have this rotor ready to go. We're going to go to the other. Now well, what we got to do is we got to spray a little bit of penetrating oil here on a couple of our clamp connections a little PB blaster on there let that sit in there so we can actually get these things off of here and let it set first rule of the road don't spray the PB blaster on the camera lens right all right I think we got her lubed up. At least the camera lens won't go anywhere, right? Get that cleaned up. That was a mess. Go ahead and see about removing this one here. Get this off of here. And this, of course, releases the brake line. So we have a little more freedom of movement with the caliper. We'll just go ahead and uh, put this back in so we don't lose it. Oh, that's a tow truck, folks. So, got that one off of there. And we're gonna go down here, get this one. You got that one off of there. Nice, quick, easy work. Pull the bolts out. As you can see, uh, dry. Those things are dry, folks. So is this one. Look at this. Got some wear on it. But they're both dry, so that might account if we're looking at our brake rotors they're dry okay they're not much lube on here so we're gonna assume that uh, they weren't sliding which would cause some of my uh, brake rotor wear that I'm gonna show you now also keep in mind that you have two different sizes okay you got the big one up here and the little one down here that's how they go okay if you do it that way you won't fit see so you want the big one up top, the little one at the bottom. As you can tell, it's quite loud, but we're going to go ahead and remove this brake line too. Get that way it's loose, and then we'll just go ahead and tighten this right back in there hand tight to hold it. And the tow truck is finally leaving, but we're going to go ahead and uh, get this caliper rack loosened off remember short one at the bottom and then we're gonna get this top one off of here got that one released again they're pretty dry folks so that's probably accounting for some of the uh, the wear because these things are bone dry so proper lubrication once a year will definitely save you some effort on this now just keep in mind these are hot because I just got done driving the edge and of course I got to get something to tie these up here real quick uh, that way we don't have them hanging by the brake line so I'm going to go ahead and search that out but we're going to start seeing what the pads are like and everything else and uh, start inspecting that as you can see we got uh, 
some uh, pad left here, but this one here is just about down to nothing, and it's all ground and ribbed, and I'll show you what it exactly looks like, but that pad is definitely almost shot, and this one here on the outer side is good, and we're going to evaluate why did the inside wear and the outside didn't. All right, we're going to go ahead and tie this caliper up and make sure it don't fall or anything like that. Got some basic wire here, and we'll just give it a few twists and keep it up out of the way so we're not hanging by our brake line while we're doing this work. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. Now I got this uh, caliper wired up the same as the other one. Now we're going to start removing the bracket here off and with the brake pads. And we're going to do a quick inspection of these brake pads as we take them off to see what was going on. Now we got that first pad off. We got the first pad off and as you can see uh, it is a Ford Motor Company OEM. Uh, not much rust to it. Nothing. Good backing plate. Not even rusted. It doesn't even look like it's uh, metal. It's some sort of high, uh, higher tech materials but it is definitely uh, a lot better shape and uh, it might be worth keeping actually. But this is OEM pad. Got the groove in it yet, so we're really good on as far as the groove goes. This pad wasn't really worn. Now, we got the bracket here. Uh, we got the other pads, so we're going to pop that one off. Let's get this one off of here. And as you can see, look at that. Look at that grooving in this thing. You see that pattern of grooving? Okay. It was like somebody gouged the heck out of it and uh, it's almost worn out on the inside now what causes this type of wear well we're gonna investigate that and see what actually happened but again these are uh, Ford OEM brake pads okay we got a lot of rust on one caliper side uh, looks like so there's a lot of water going on here now we got our clips and everything we'll look at the brackets closer uh, but we do know that these uh, guide pins, of course, are dry. And I'm going to go ahead and see if we can't pull these out. But they are terrible. Okay. That one. That one don't really want to come out. And I don't know why. I know why. It's attached over here to this side. Uh, but this one here just fits right in. And slides in there. And the other one, the boot goes all the way through. So, not quite sure how that all is going to work out in the long run. But... We'll go ahead and check her all out, make sure everything's good. Make sure everything seats up in there good. But this goes all the way through, folks, okay? This rubber here goes all the way through. So I can only assume you gotta pinch it to pull it out and then to clean it and everything else because there's probably rust and everything else in there. All right, the same way for both sides. We're going to go ahead. It's 19 millimeters. We're going to remove that one. Keep in mind, this bracket will fall if you don't hang on. So we'll just get it on there. And, of course, the bracket comes right free. We'll go ahead and we'll just leave these laying here in, the, in their spot. That way we know where they go. Now let's go ahead and investigate our caliper brackets, brake pads, and, of course, rotors. Now this rotor's coming right off for the most part, so we're doing pretty good. There we go, we got her off. Digital micrometer, okay? We're going to go ahead and measure this. And what do we got here? 28. So... Not near the 26, that is the minimum, but gives you enough to grind it, I guess. You could actually uh, 
take and save this. I expected it to be far worse, but it does say the minimum is 26, and this one is running 28. So enough to grind them, enough to take and uh, hone them down, but uh, I think by the time you got done getting into these grooves, these grooves are, of course, definitely uh, quite deep, but uh, I think there's enough here that you could actually take and put them on a lathe and, uh, of course, get them uh, cleaned up and checked out. So we'll go ahead and m measure the other one. All right, this one here, as you can see, came off of the driver's side. Multiple grooves and everything in it, a lot of heavy corrosion, and here on the, on the rotor, it says minimum thickness right here, barely through the rust, 26 millimeter. So we're going to go ahead and, of course, uh, zero this thing out. And then we're going to spread her out here to see what we got as far as a measurement. And this one's worn a little worse. It's 27.93. Okay, still, you can go through. And if you wanted to, which I don't know why you would, uh, you could uh, definitely go through this thing. And I'll turn it around so you all can see. But uh, got it right there. Let me re-zero this thing out again. Open her up. It looks like we got a 28, 40, 39 on this one. Uh, numbers don't lie, I guess, so we're all set. Again, this one could be turned, but there's no saying uh, that you can or can't. But based on the rust, I wouldn't think it'd be salvageable. Now, folks, we got the air raid siren going on, so I'm going to take a quick break here and uh, get things in order. But uh, this is what I meant by never judge a book by its cover. Take it and look at this thing, smooth, nicely worn, right? And this is what I saw on the outside. And then we have this. This is on the inside. And we're going to discuss what the possibilities of why this occurred and why you need to inspect your brakes and make sure that they're taken care of yearly to make sure this doesn't occur. Now, as far as the rotors go, the reason we have such a smooth side on this side on the outside and I was looking at it thinking there's no problem with rotors is the caliper pins uh, if they stick uh, depending on what's going on in the pressures uh, it, it sticks and then when the pressure was put on this it stuck it stayed there but when the pressure was put on the caliper if it was stuck the pressure was put on this side and cleaned the rust off okay this side kept nice and clean what happened was there was it got stuck there wasn't any pressure on this side okay and what happened was is the rust build up okay and when the rust build up we then ended up with issues with our pads now what happened was was this pad was sitting here but it wasn't quite touching okay so it allowed rust to build up. And once the rust builds up on these pads, okay, and it sets for a while, it starts bubbling up. Now, once it forms enough of a bubble, it acts like sandpaper, and it starts cutting grooves into the, into the pads as the rust grows. So think of the rust as a growing object sticking up out, and it's sticking, one little bit of rust grows, one little bubble starts, then it starts grinding away and then it grows bigger and bigger and pretty soon there's no contact on here okay as it's spinning and going around there's no contact that rust is actually touching uh, the pad here or the rotor and then these grooves are started and these grooves grind away and then of course they create that that pattern on here which is what caused so there's not enough pressure here but on the outside there was enough pressure to clean that rust off and therefore it didn't get started. Other things that could actually happen, you know, the calipers, uh, they get sticky in the pins, and of course they don't go. And then of course your grooves right up in here, uh, these things get rust built up behind them, okay? 
and then they start going in and we'll take and pop that out real quick we'll pop these clips out and we'll take and uh, evaluate what we got on here and you can see those were jammed in there pretty hard and as you can see we got you know rust that could be building up in here they're touching in here so that means they're rubbing there's no grease on them at all nothing okay so that means that they're metal on metal and they could probably not even be moving. And then if we look at this one here, that one that was sticking, there's nothing. There's no grease or anything on it, okay? Same goes here, there's no grease, okay? So these definitely needed some maintenance. Now if you look underneath here, they're all pretty clean, but look, there's a lot of rubbing right there. That tells you there's no grease and it was rubbing that corner end out and uh, definitely putting a lot of pressure on it. And that was pretty, uh, pretty much the same thing on this one. No grease. They're all dry and rusty, folks. There's nothing on them. And if you look in the brackets themselves, they're they're pretty nasty shape. Uh, as you can see, we got a little bit of rubbing going on right here. And then, of course, we have some rubbing going on here. And, of course, these things were uh, bracketed. So, as you can see, these this here was on the inside. Now, if you look on the inside of the brackets, okay, look, we got movement here and we have movement here this outside one was moving but look at this one nothing nothing was happening okay not one bit okay so it was definitely uh, causing some wear now other things that can cause this type of wear uh, on the inside uh, it could be the uh, caliper itself is bad we want to inspect the calipers to make sure the rubber boots and everything of course is in good condition so we want to go and inspect those but this is in a nutshell on the rotors and, and both of them are wearing the same uh, so what are the chances of identical problems well maybe we could have a uh, equalization of pressures through our system itself I doubt that is the case uh, I'm just gonna say it's five-year-old rotors that have never been maintained and they of course the water hangs on the inside better than the outside because the outside is exposed to more air movement uh, when the vehicle is sitting so and, and it gets washed more and it gets sprayed better so therefore it stands the reason why these were of course uh, not not doing uh, much as far as that goes but I do got a lot more miles on them now and they're starting to get uh, smoothed out and it could be because of the way my wife drives. She doesn't touch the brakes very much or something, uh, you know, and very easy on them, and it doesn't wear. I'm harder on the brakes, I press harder. I was starting to clean this off, and this is definitely cleaner than it was when I first noticed. Now we're going to inspect our boots here. Looks like everything is in good shape. I don't see any uh, damage or rusting going on here. No leakage. Surfaces are in pretty good shape. A little rusty on the inside. Got some crud in there, but it's just surface rust. Nothing to be concerned about. But overall, I'm going to say it's in pretty good shape. I don't see any leaks or anything else that would indicate any type of damage although the age of the rubber is getting there uh, but I just don't see anything that would indicate that these rotors are in bad shape or these I, I don't see anything that would indicate that these uh, plungers of course are in bad shape so all we got to do is take it of course push these back but I got to drop the car down and release the brake cap a little bit so we can push these plungers back down because I haven't filled it yet uh, because we're changing the brakes and we're going to bleed the system. But again, these are in good shape. So we're going to go and 
take care of the caliper brackets and then get everything else prepared. Uh, the rubber boot wasn't looking in that good a shape and to, I'm going to take and see what we got to do here because as you can tell we got to get this one out of here and we got to figure out how to push it in and push it out because apparently it goes in one way or another not sure how but it fits all the way through folks if you can see that uh, so I'm gonna see how we're gonna get this out of here there's got to be a way so I'm gonna experiment with this while we're waiting to get that kit and uh, see what we can do here to get this out so as you can see I was pushing it through and it goes all the way through so this is the rubber boot that you would be pulling in or out uh, getting your boots so we're gonna have to slide this back in and I'm sure that we just use the pin to push it in and that's probably the best way it's gonna go but uh, what this does allow me to do is take this thing and blaster I'm gonna blaster and clean and rubber boots go off and then you just take it and you just push her through you can use your pin to get it in there get it pushed in and then you just pull it out it's that simple now I can take these and I can blast them in the blast booth clean all the rust off of them and I'm gonna paint them Ford blue now some other things you gotta remember whenever you're gonna take and do your brakes you want to make sure you know oh, let me go back here if you see this happening to your cap that means your brake fluid is getting low so when you take and uh, get done doing the uh, brake fluid change and everything else all you simply do is you push this back in okay that'll be nice and flat and that is one visual indication you know your fluids getting low because it forms a suction on this cap but we're just gonna go ahead and uh, just let it set up there and we're gonna go ahead and compress the calipers and uh, this fluid of course will go back up and then we'll uh, go ahead and start our uh, brake cleaning process so this is uh, the front brake so it's a double, double pit piston so we just take our uh, caliper press here and we just start pressing it back in and it's a real simple tool you just keep pressing until they're all the way back in can't go any further and then we're all set release it and we pull it out and again this is what you got everything's situated nice and smooth and flat and then we can put our new brake pads in same thing on this one we do the same thing we get it all set up in here and again we just take and uh, get it on there and then we just compress them back in nice and slow and easy till they come to a stop there we go all done release it and pull it out and there we have it our piston calipers and uh, calipers in good shape there so we'll carry on and start with our brake well folks as you can see uh, this is why you leave the cap just loose when I push the caliper plungers back it overflowed and it went up a little bit high and this is exactly why you just leave that cap loose sitting on top I will now have to go through and uh, power wash this out a little bit when I'm all done clean up my antifreeze I spilled too so I'll get it all in one shot and get it all cleaned up but that is what happens and that is why you re release the cap that way you don't have that pressure build up in there when you squeeze those caliper plungers back well folks good or bad I take and I use the Duralast rotors I have been for my last three vehicles and they are lasting my current Ford Edge Lulu Bell as I call her uh, has over 60,000 miles on the rotors and those rotors are not worn folks the brake pads aren't even worn on them. it's 60,000 miles and that's all around so uh, I'm going to stick with what I know works for me. Rotors, pads, everybody's got an opinion. Granted, use what you feel is best for you. But this is what works for me, so this is what I'm going to stay with. Uh, but these are high carbon steel rotors. 
and they're the front rotors and they're all painted. So therefore, when I put them on, I don't have to spray them down, I don't have to do nothing. I just put them on and of course take the plastic off. But basically, they're all painted to help prevent rust and corrosion and they do, of uh, course, coat them all the way through the veins on both sides. And of course, 26 millimeter is the minimum thickness. And this is what I'm gonna put on there. All these rotors here are guaranteed for a lifetime warranty. So that's what I use. The thing I marry them up with, the reason they're high carbon steel rotors, because I use the Duralast uh, Gold C-Max. These are the highest ceramic quantity uh, pads you can get for your rotors, okay? Now you cannot put these pads on regular lower carbon steel rotors. They will chew them up, folks. So you have to make sure you spend money on the rotors. These rotors themselves are like 65 bucks a piece. This brake pad kit here for the C-Max are running almost $70 for the, for the set. So uh, if you spend money on your brakes, you'll get good braking, folks. Almost guaranteed, because when you buy the cheap stuff, you can expect subpar materials as far as I'm concerned. And I always like to stop, because stopping is the one way you can avoid most accidents and everything else. So why skimp on your brake pads? You want to make sure you have the best quality stuff. So we clean everything up, get it all done. Of course, I use this non-chlorinated stuff to make sure that everything is nice and clean. And like I said, we want to make sure that everything is good to go as far as our brakes. We'll go ahead and clean up the other side now too. We get this one cleaned up. As you can see, it eats all that away and gets it nice and clean. Can't get much better than that, huh? Get it there. There we go. Get a few old man grunts in here on occasion. There. Don't have to be perfect. We just want to make sure we get all the big stuff off of there to make sure it's nice and clean. And then, of course, we'll go ahead and uh, I don't want to spray my light. So we'll remove the light here. Get this uh, rotor cleaned up. caliper rather get the caliper nice and cleaned up why not get her nice and clean okay next thing we're gonna go and do of course is we're gonna sandblast the uh, what do you call it the uh, caliper bracket all right folks gonna go ahead and use the blast booth here and we're gonna clean up my caliper brackets And see if I can see what I'm going to do. There we go. And you can't see real good. done so let's see what we got Woo. we have nice shiny clean caliper brackets ready for painting pretty well cleaned up I'll go and spray them down with some brake clean and uh, blow them out and we'll go ahead and paint these up 
and uh, I think they're ready to go. Got most of the rest off of them. Can't get much cleaner than that, folks. All right, got my caliper pin kit in. Is it comes with uh, more brake hardware? Like I really needed that. I already have that, but uh, saves me on the next set maybe. But it does come with the two new rubber boots and the short ones and the long ones, and those are what we really needed. So we got these, and again, this is a parts kit, and it is a Motorcraft kit. So. If you want to know what the part number is, it's right there. All right, clean, clean everything out here really good. Get that out of there. That's a, definitely a dead end right in there. So you gotta clean that out. And then we're gonna clean this out. And then we're gonna Spray it all down. Get everything cleaned up so we can get it ready to paint. And again, that one's uh, straight through. Get that cleaned out. And this one, lots of junk in there, so you always want to clean that out. And you get the other can. Well, they say you never have enough brake cleaner. So, got this clean, we'll dry her up and paint them. Okay, I got the uh, brackets cleaned, uh, sprayed them down with brake cleaner, and now we're gonna go ahead and spray paint Ford Blue our brackets. I'm not gonna paint the calipers, we're just gonna paint the brackets for now, because I do have them sandblasted, and I do have them nice and clean, so why not uh, give them a little bit of uh, protection with some paint? so that we can uh, put something on there and make it work out really good. So we're just waiting for these to dry a little bit and then we'll put them on and get them painted rather. There, as you can see, some nice blue, Ford blue ca brake caliper brackets. Just gonna let these dry for about an hour or so so that I can then start installing all the uh, parts back into them. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, do our brake bleed after we install the pads. Well, not a whole lot more left to do. I figure we might as well put these on here. But first, before I put this uh, rotor on here, I want to spray this thing down with a little bit of this anti-rust inhibitor. Just to make sure things don't rust up on us here. Keep things in the fair and equal. Always want to plan ahead in case I ever want to do another brake job again. I can take and, uh, of course, make sure that I have the brake rotors right there. It's that simple. They fit right on really easy. I like these rotors for the most part you just go ahead and you just slide them right on and as the pads wear them out uh, they'll clean that off and just clean the rotor of the part that is actually touching the pad. No cleaning, no wiping down the brake cleaner, you just toss them on and put the pads on. Can't get much simpler than that. Well folks I do have my Mighty Vac kit that I did order so we may as well break this thing open and see what we actually have because I'm going to be doing a one person brake bleeding job so we want to make sure that we can uh, go ahead and get this thing running instructions who needs instructions right and of course we open everything up and bits and pieces will fly out everywhere I'll have to put everything in a bag here looks like but we're after the main components of this kit and that is this little tank cover where we're going to put our brake fluid into and it just shuts up there uh, we don't want that we got a couple extra hoses here but uh, basically 
from what I understand in looking at this, we just take and uh, put the hoses one end to the other. Okay, got the hose. And of course, we put the uh, reservoir on here. And then we take the mighty vac and we slip it over this end. And then we put this here on the brake line right there. And then we just start pumping it up. And then as you can see, we'll pump it up, get our pressure going, and then uh, we just take and release it that way. But we'll pump it up, it'll suck it up, and the fluid, if you keep this level like this, will all accumulate in here in the air and the vacuum will go through this hose. So this is a one person thing. I can fill the reservoir up at the top of the car there, and then I can go down, break it open, suck the fluid out until I start seeing it clear up, and then I can stop, tighten it up, and move to the next tire. Uh, it's pretty much as simple as it gets. I'll, we, I will have to, of course, uh, take the rear tires off so I can have access to the lines there, uh, and I'll do that in a bit, but that in general is how it will work. And of course, I have the brake fluid, and this is DOT 304 full synthetic brake fluid, uh, and I will of course fill the reservoir up as I empty it and uh, we'll get that whole system cleaned out and get our brake fluid changed out. Now, of course, none of this stuff am I sponsored on. I paid for everything you see here myself so I can get my free and unbiased opinion or biased opinion concerning what you want to talk about. Now yeah, we got our uh, kit here. So you know, strange they call it a pin kit, but all they can do is give you a brake shims and and uh, your rubber boots. And again, we got to get this thing slid in here. I think the silicon brake grease is making it a little easier. Or ceramic brake grease, I should say. Seems like it's sliding in just a little bit easier. It's going in anyway. Now let's see if this pin will push it in the rest of the way. Again, watch. There we go. And you pop her back out. There we go. That's what it takes. So we got her in there. So we're all set. Now yeah, we want to take and uh, grease these up good. Remember this one goes in here with the uh, full boot. Get the grease in there. We want to make sure we get plenty in there. Just makes things go a little bit easier. So we want to make sure we get a little bit more in there. Got to be careful of getting too much. Then it don't uh, want to move around too much gets too much pressure build up in it but make sure you get her get enough in there so it don't go dry on you you don't want that so we got that one then we of course we're gonna take and get this one get this one coated up so we can get her in there We don't want that one getting dry either. And then again, it cleans everything off as you go in there, so you gotta keep shoving it back in. And 
once we get it going, I think we're uh, got plenty of uh, brake grease in there. Just a little bit more. Because after all, remember we had a problem and we don't want that problem. So. There we go. Now it wants to force itself back out. That's really what we want. We want it to be able to take and work its way back out a little bit. That way we always got the brakes moving. So we'll clean this up a little, get all the residue off of it. Get them all cleaned up. Now we can go ahead and put them together. As you can see, I got the clips on, and of course, I'm greasing up the uh, guides here, making sure everything is uh, well lubricated, as they say, because we don't want anything dry to happen to these. Get some more grease here, because I don't want anything to happen. So, we're going to take and make sure that everything is well lubricated. And that includes, of course, anything to do with the tabs, any place that rubs on, uh, on the pads themselves. We got grease on there, so those ears are all done. We want to make sure we have enough lubricant on there. Because it does dry out after a while, so... We want to make sure everything fits good. Clean my hands off. And of course, get everything cleaned up. And we're going to go ahead and start putting these things on. All right, we're going to go ahead and put our bolts in here. And I got to take and remember the bolts. So we put our brackets in. get the holes lined up anyway got those holes lined up and of course we get these holes lined up and then we'll get them cinched back in place get them snugged up here just a little bit Once I get them tight, and I'll turn this up and give her the beans a little bit. There. Nice and snug. So the bracket's in there, so now we can go ahead and put this caliper back on after we put these pads in here. All right, we're going to go ahead and slide these... Uh, calipers back in here the pads let's get these in here first there we go got those in and then There, got them all in there, nice and snug, and of course, all ready to go. So now we just got to put the caliper back on. Of course, we're going to undo our wire that was holding the caliper back up. Get the wire off of here. And then we just slide... Slide this pin right in here. There we go. And then we take and do the same thing for the other one. Keep in mind you want to get that 
rubber lined up. Get the rubber lined up and then we can get these things started. And as you can see, there's a good amount of pressure back going back on them to get them started. And we get them going. Make sure we got it able to snug up. And there we go. Then I'll turn her down to number one, get her in there. And we'll do the same thing on this one. And we'll crank her up a little bit and snug her up. There we go. We got our calipers replaced. On the front, a uh, nice pretty blue, as you can see. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get our bracket on here. Again, we're gonna find the bolt hole, get it started. Easier said than done sometimes, you're just looking at my back, but you gotta see what you're doing, and that's hard to do sometimes. But we got them hand started. That way we don't strip nothing out. And then of course we take our uh, impact. And I got her turned down to a one, give it a little bit easier start. And we'll give her some of the beans, as they say. Not full grill, but we want to make sure it's tight. There we go. Got that on. Now we're going to go ahead and put our brakes on. Again, take and put our pads on. Got them on. Sometimes lining these things up is a pain. Wow. There we go. It's so like I said, sometimes it is a pain to get them to line up, but once you do, you're pretty good. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and unwrap this caliper. Careful so we don't drop it. And again, want to slide this one in. Make sure you line that rubber boot up. There we go. Then we got to push that rubber boot in there into place. And 
and that can be a little bit of a mother there we go I didn't say that did I I stopped there we go got that one in it looks like we're getting this one tightened up too I'll just get the socket make sure we got her started good looks like we do yep we don't want to strip these turn this one down again I'm sure they're tightened up to spec but anyway that is it we got our rotors on I'm gonna clean a little bit off of that but uh, what we have to do though is oh man I almost forgot you guys let me forget this stuff aren't you holy cow what about this y'all y'all just watching me and letting me let me mess up all right we'll turn this back the other way Remember, we got to take this and we got to put this on here as far as the brake line holder. Remember how that all went in there? There you go. We More than likely, we really didn't need to remove this, but I did anyway. Just gave me a little bit more room anyway, but... Whoa! Go ahead and get that on there. Nice and snug. And we'll go ahead and do the other one on the other side. There we go. Got that all situated. All right. Get this brake line in there. Get a hand started and we'll snug her up. There we go. We're all set. That's all snug. All right. We got our first uh, catch already done. So we're going to go ahead and uh, build up our pressure again. And go ahead and give this the beans. And I've already filled up the uh, reservoir again. We're just going to try to get this thing uh, going. To get some of the uh, fluid to change out here. As you can see, it's pretty brown. Uh, going to keep going until we get her uh, pulled through and it starts changing a little lighter in color. This is, a, this is a second catch that I'm doing. And of course, this is the right rear, which as reason goes, I guess, is, is the furthest from the uh, brake system. So we'll keep it up to about 15 on the back. And we'll just keep uh, sucking the fluid through. As you can see, slow process. I had to put some grease around the uh, little uh, drain uh, valve here because it was pulling in air. But once I got some grease around it, everything went pretty good. So we're still pulling. As you can see, it's, it's pretty brown stuff. That is some pretty brown fluid that we got there. So I'm 
gonna go ahead and close this off again. We'll go ahead and drain that, release the pressure, and we're gonna go drain this. We'll come back. Okay, folks, this is where we're at with this. This is number five, and I gotta go to the other side. I'm running out of fluid. So we're gonna do the other side here, and if I have to, I'll get another bottle and continue the flush. But we only got the rear here done, and uh, it's still not quite clear, but we're gonna go ahead and close it up. So we can do the other side. You know, just so you all know what we're looking for, this is what we're looking for, okay? Not getting that yet, so I'm gonna dump this in the uh, reservoir and we'll continue flushing. Well, as you can see, it is definitely lighter this second time around. So most of it uh, was taken care of by the far right and now it's getting a little easier on the back here and I'm sure the fronts will be just a little bit easier. Uh, but it's starting to lighten up. Fluid up top here is definitely lighter. So I may have to go and buy me another quart because uh, I used it all up pretty much just doing these rears. Uh, I'll try to do a little bit of a bleed on the fronts just to get some of the old fluid out to get it changed out. But uh, I think we're going to have to run a whole nother bottle through here just to get everything nice and clean. And that'll be for the next brake job. When I do the rears, I'll go ahead and do another bleed on this and get everything cleaned up. All right, that is pretty much it, folks. I have ran out of brake fluid, so uh, I used a whole cord up, and I'm still not done. So I'm going to clean all this up, put the tires back on, and I do have to work on these rear brakes and replace the pads and everything on them. So. I'm just going to take and uh, clean this up, put the cap back on, and uh, live to fight another day, as they say. But I do have the system fairly well uh, flushed out now on the rears. The fronts I will take care of in a couple weeks and uh, get them uh, bled out a little bit. And uh, I think we'll be in good shape. Now, whatever you do, you go ahead and clean all that grease off. I, in this case, I use that uh, high temp brake grease on here so not too worried about anything but I'll clean that off a little bit and then do not forget about this you could cause yourself all sorts of problems by not putting that rubber protective cap on there but that's it we've got the brakes bled we're gonna start it up of course and pump them and make sure everything's good but uh, we're gonna go ahead and clean up and get the tires back on and call this a day Pump up the brakes just a little bit. Now they're getting hard. I think we're, I think we're good to go. Let's give them a test here. Put it in gear. think we're good. We now have good running brakes. Alright folks, got everything finished up and of course I do have both rear brakes bled. Uh, still getting a brownish tint to the uh, brake fluid so I'm going to run a whole nother quart through and I'm going to bleed it all out next time I do the brakes in a couple weeks because I'm going to replace the brakes here on the back and I'm going to go through the same process and of course I will document that on video and we'll get that brake bleed done. I'm going to buy two quarts just in case and I'm going to bleed the heck out of these things. I'm going to get that fluid clear again. Uh, but that being said, I think we got a good brake job on there. You saw it in the front. I went in and painted them uh, Ford blue on the front. Those caliper brackets and everything. And got those pin rubber kits put in there to help make things slide around a lot better. 
So all that's left really is for me to pump the brakes, start her up, get the tires on of course, and give her a quick test run. But I'm pretty sure we got some good front brakes on here because I've used these for like, this is my third, fourth set that I put on different cars. So I know these ceramic pads and rotors are gonna work good. By all means, I do want you to go over here to Facebook, of course, and join up on our Facebook page on MACT Ford Edge. And I do want you to get a hold of everybody and know what we're doing over there. And by all means, participate in the page. And also go ahead to the YT right there and sign up and subscribe to YT for MACT Ford Edge channel. And of course, watch all these videos. And again, you get notifications whenever I put them up if you do subscribe. So you know when I put out a new video. But by all means, remember, every day is a great day when both feet hit the floor. And I'm having a great day, and I want you to have a great day too. So I'm going to let this all go to Mercy Girl. She's going to give you a couple quick one-liners. And we're going to go ahead and call this an end to this video.